So after another trip to the chef store, a 10 pound bag of the red kidney beans, and we have a 50 pound bag of the pinto beans. We use a mix of these when we make chili. And then these we also do refried beans and some other dishes. So we're going to get those started, use some of those for our chili. And that's why even if they're triple cleaned, you still check them all because that rock is bad for your teeth. I don't see Bullwinkle, but there's Rocky. Looks delicious. It does. This is its friend. There's 880 grams. So now the pinto beans, 900 grams of these. Okay, so I'll rinse these and get them into the pot. So these are going in there. After Yeehaw! Okay. That's been drained. Now I'll add Eight cups of water. Okay, and then we'll simmer that until they're just about completely soft and then add everything else. Got the ingredient the rest of the ingredients for the chili. So we've got a mix of salsa verde and paste picante sauce crushed tomatoes. Diced tomatoes would be good on there too. The ground beef that's been browned. Onions, better than bouillon, like beef bouillon. Tomato paste, bacon bits, freeze-dried garlic, cumin, crushed red peppers, oregano, some green chilies, and a cup of chili powder. So all those need to get thrown in there, mixed around, and then simmer for a while. So the beans have had time to cook until they're just tender. Yep, need to get everything else in there real quick, mostly for cooking the onions. That's everything. Need to give it a bit of a stir. Okay, now stir it around, let it simmer for a couple hours, and it's done. Yep, so after it's simmered for a couple hours, we'll be ready to cool and put in pans, or put in pans and then cool, pre-freeze, and then freeze dry. The chilies had a chance to cool a little bit. We've taken some out and separated it out so we could have it for lunch and dinner later. Now we'll get these in pans. So I'm putting a pound in each pan and in some of them I'm putting a half pound on each side of a divider, giving a, a very, very light coating of the non-stick cooking spray on the bottom so they'll pop out easier. Make sure I give everything a stir, though it's nice and thick, so it doesn't look like it's separating or anything. Then I just use a measuring cup to get it out of there. And again, usually I would do 500 grams just because it's the math is so nice. But for this series, whoa, I'm trying to do a pound. Okay and give it a little shake it levels it out and one pound and so when it gets rehydrated i'll add enough to get it back to a pound it's hot on the bottom and i'm not going to make you watch very many of these 
Okay. So I'm just a very light film of the cooking spray to help them pop out. And these are magnetic. tear it out and I think I always forget to mention that these are just something I 3d printed and so they're and then I added these later uh, and then redesigned for future ones uh, because it makes a very it's a very weak area right here in fact I've broke off one or two of these had to glue them back on so I just added these for stiffener and then on the later models that's all printed in and then when it gets about to here there's a slot inside to drop a magnet inside, then it prints over the top. And then it gets vapor smooth so that uh, liquid can't get inside there. So it keeps it nice and uh, liquid tight and easy to clean. Anyway, I don't think I mentioned that very much. And there is a video on what I did. And one of the other, I can't remember his name, darn it. Um, one of the viewers did laser cutting and made his own. I think laser cutting would be a great choice for these be fast. These are, takes a couple hours on my printer. Okay, going for eight pounds. There we go. On eight pounds. <laughs> uh, half pounds, so eight ounces on each side. And by using these half pans, I'll be able to fill up the freeze dryer pan and get it a real perfect fit. Okay. You can see it's not strong enough to pick up the, the pan, but it's, it's enough to hold that divider in place so it doesn't float up if, with liquids in there. So it's got just about one full cup for the eight ounces. I think it's a little bit less. So it's a decent serving. It's not a big serving but it fills up the freeze dryer pans and that's so I can use every bit of the space and that's what I'm after. We'll get all those filled and we'll get them uh, pre-frozen and get them ready. I think these go in, I'm not sure, maybe next week. Anyway, these go in sometime in the future. They'll go in the freeze dryer. The chili's well frozen. We're gonna get them popped out of there. Just pushing the sides out a little bit. And I've got one of these corrugated plastic pieces under it to keep it insulated from the table so they don't warm up too much. So, yeah, pop out the one pound blob of chili and I'll put it in the bag. I don't like that. It's just going to end up breaking. I'll put that in a different one. All right. So that'll go in the freezer and wait for its turn in the freeze dryer. The freeze dryer is finished defrosting after the rice. Uh, got about a three quarters of a gallon of water from the rice. So it was a lower batch than a lot of the, these current ones, a lot of the recent ones, which have been very, very full jug. Uh, so this one, quite a bit less in comparison. And it showed it took less time to do the process. Now, going to get it restarted, cooled, and ready for the next batch, which is chili. Uh, that's our, our meal one for this round. So we'll get this cooled and get that in there. Get the fan out of the door and the little defrost baffle out. And we'll get the thermometer in. Okay, get the front in place. Get that closed down, get it started. And I will go check the drain valve. OK, 
Okay, and the drain valve is closed. Okay, we'll come back in just a little while. When that's cold enough, we'll put the things on the tray. The freeze dryer is very pre-cooled now because it's been an hour and a half instead of just a half hour. Uh, it's time to load the stuff in there. Uh, we're doing chili in this next batch. That's the sixth category that I'm using. So it's the meal portion of it. So let's get them on the trays and get them in there. All right, tray one and had it in the freezer so that it's nice and chilly. Ha, <laughs> and chilly, because we're doing chili. I kill me. Okay, so tray one of the chili. So I've got the frozen cubes of chili or frozen blocks of chili that I de-panned earlier. So here's one of the little half blocks. And we'll just see if we can pull some of these out of there. Okay. So a little bit of ice there. There we go. So 1860 tray one. And these were in the freezer, of course. So they've already lost a little bit of weight just in the freezer. So tray one. Tray two, let's see how fast we can get them on there. 1853. Okay, tray three. And by freezing them in these blocks, sometimes we have a hundred of these blocks or 150 blocks in the freezer waiting for their turn. And one of the little half ones. Okay, 1862. And finally, tray four. and 1849. So now I want to get the thermometers in there. Starting about here. Okay. So we'll get the other ones in there. Okay, we'll get them rolled over there and get them in. Freeze dryer's been pre-cooling now for two hours and it's 35 below zero in there. We'll get the chili in there while it's still chilly. I <laughs> kill me. Let's get those in there. Starting at the bottom, tray four. And that still shows 10 degrees. Tray three. And that shows lower than 10 degrees. Tray two. And that one shows about 15 degrees right now. But that's one of the last thermometers I put in. And that one shows about eight degrees. So they're all nice and cold still. Chilly. They're all chilly. The ring is all the way around there now. It's nicely sealed. So it'll start itself in about four hours and I'll turn on the oil filtration pump timer and the fan for the, the pump. This room doesn't get very warm. Uh, probably the warmest this room's ever been is 75. So it's a nice room for working this in there. Um, but I still run a cooling fan on the vacuum pump, but it's more to make sure that the motor stays cool this corner where it's at is the warmest part in this entire room and it's kind of blocked by all the machinery so it has to pull it through and it kind of recirculates so this just gives it an extra boost of cool and helps keep the motor cool i could be wrong but i believe electric motors work better if they're not overheated and last longer I don't know about the oil, the actual vacuum pump portion of it, which is the front portion of it. Uh, but this is the best place I've got to put this fan. I, I really can't put it in the back. So I leave it here. It washes across this side, kind of swirls around, kind of blows the heat away. Chili is going to be done in just a couple minutes. Uh, we'll do the first weight check and then put it back in for a couple hours to make sure it was dry.
it's down to the last five minutes and I want to cancel out and get past it. The heaters have been off for 10 minutes already, which means the trays have already started to cool. Uh, but the coolest one is still at about 110 degrees, so there's no chance of condensation yet. So let's get them checked. Let's get past the last of that. You know, open the drain valve. And get the weights checked. Okay. Starting at tray one, and we will rotate the trays top to bottom again. So 10.22. And take out tray four. 10.24, oop, 23. And I'll put it at the top. And tray one at the bottom. Tray two, and the rotating the trays will help take care of if there are any inconsistencies with the heater temperatures or the positions. So set that one aside. Tray three, 1018. Okay, and then this one will go up one. And tray two will go down one. So now we've got them back in, one through four, bottom to top this time. Okay, get that seal back up. I close the drain valve. Okay, now just add more time. So more dry time. Close the drain valve, I did, and checked. Continue, and I don't have to worry about the pump. Okay, and got a nice seal ring around it already, so it's good. We'll come back in two hours. I'm going to add 15 minutes, so I've got the full two hours of extra dry time before we take it out uh, after the heaters turn off. So, we'll be right back. Don't go away. Two hours later, time to take them out and check them to see if they've stopped losing weight. If they didn't lose any weight, then we'll count two hours ago as the finish time, even though it would have been some time before that that we don't know of, because uh, we don't check them every 10 minutes or something. Anyway, so we'll get them out and weigh them, check them. Okay, we're in the last 10 minutes, so it's already turned the heaters off, but they're still toasty warm. Get that off. So we'll get the drain valve open. Okay. And tray one. Yeah, it's still up 110 degrees. Okay, 1022, no change. Which means that was done two hours ago. Tray two. 1019, so under less than one gram. If that's the worst of them, we'll be taking them out and bagging them. Okay, tray three. Ten seventeens, also one gram. So, so far I think we're safe to take them out. And tray four. And 10.22, also one gram. So two full hours, and there's only one gram uh, on each one of those trays, which would be, uh, they would have close to 300 grams of product, so less than one third of a percent. Going to turn that off with no defrost. So after two full hours, the three of the trays lost about one gram a piece or less than one gram because they kind of bounce on the scale a little bit, uh, the, the weight number. And there's close to 300 
grams of product on each one of those trays. So that's less than one third of 1% of water by weight. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take them out and bag them. And of course, watch for any water, but I don't think that there's any issue with them. So we'll move them over, get them ready to bag. So there's the power usage for the chili, 26.24 kilowatt hours. I'll reset that so that it's ready for the next batch. Let's get the little defrost shield in there and the fan and get that going. All right. So yeah, blowing air in the top and it comes out the bottom and warms that up without having to use the tray heaters. So the chili is dry now. Um, it was 10 pounds or about 4,500 grams uh, plus a little. And now it's 1,050 grams. So it's gone down by a factor of four, a little more than that. So now we're going to bag them. Uh, I'm gonna to try to bag them in one pound bags. So let's get them bagged, see what they fit in. All right, so I've got a few bags already labeled. These are the quart bags. I've got the batch number, chili, and then the date that it went into the freeze dryer. I'll add how much water it is when I figure out how big of a bag that's going to, or how big of a bag I need. So I'm hoping that the bigger block, the one pound block will fit in the bag. So we'll get it started. I've got one of the flexible cutting boards in there to use as a gigantic funnel. I've got it teared out with that on there. So then I can crumble each block into that. I'm going to take the other blocks off to make sure that I have one block at a time uh, to keep them separate. So just kind of crush it just enough to kind of break the sauce part apart, but not enough to damage the beans. Okay, so a nice whole bean still. So that closes easily. So that's what I'm gonna do, one pound per bag. And I need this on there at the same time. So 12 and a quarter ounces of water. So I could just put that it needs about 12 ounces of water. Okay, so one pound or about two cups and 12 and a quarter ounces of water. Good, just crush them very lightly. They should be about the same, yeah within three hundredths of an ounce. So basically 11 and a quarter ounces, I mean 12 and a quarter ounces, would be about the right amount. Got them all bagged. They have beautiful beans in there. Uh, it's just, yeah, they're, they're just soft and dusty at this point until you rehydrate them. So I'm using 300 cc oxygen absorbers in these. So I'll get these uh, in all the bags and get them zippered shut. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of tuck it along the side and push it down so that it uh, stays out of the zipper. Make sure I get one in each one and zipper them shut. I can push out any extra air I can. There's a little bit of space at the bottom or at the top. There's a little bit of extra space so I can kind of squish them flat to get out any extra air. One of the reasons I wanted to do this series was to show what 500 pounds of food looks like. How many people out there don't have a pantry with 100 pounds of food or 50 pounds of food, let alone 500 pounds of food? Uh, now, heat sealing the bags. So using the impact sealer and it's got a, a wide 
five millimeter seal piece on it. I'm going to put it uh, seal at the top edge of the bag as high up as I can get it and still have a full width seal to make sure that it's sealed well. And I'm going to do it twice on the first one to make sure that it's nice and hot. Let it cool for a few seconds and got a nice wide seal. Buying a freeze dryer isn't really very cheap, but have you considered sharing one? That was the other reason I thought I should do a series like this, to show what 500 pounds looks like. If you bought one of the large machines, they can comfortably do 2,500 pounds of food in a year. If you split the price of the machine five ways, it's only $720, and you could each get 500 pounds of food in one year. It's something that might be worth considering. I mean, sure, not everybody knows four other people that they could go in with on a machine, but even if you cut it in half or in thirds, it still makes a huge difference on the price and the affordability. Maybe it's a crazy idea and completely unworkable, but I don't know. For some families, it might work, and it would kind of go hand in hand with buying things in bulk. So all the bags are sealed. All right, that's beautiful. So last thing before I put them in the bin, I'm gonna add a gross weight to each bag. Uh, so now I've got the gross weight on the bag in case I ever have a problem with uh, a leaky bag. So water getting in there and adding weight to it. I'll finish these up and then we'll go move over to the bins. We've got the 10 one pound bags of chili ready to put in the bins. So each bag would be about two cups. A pound make is about two cups. Um, so a really nice big bowl for one person, or if you're having a bunch of other stuff, you could probably share that. Uh, if you're doing a big camping trip, you might need the whole thing by yourself and some cornbread too. Okay, so these are going in bin number four with the other things. Uh, the freeze dryer's defrosting, as soon as it's finished defrosting, we'll get the next thing in there. Going back to the top of the list again, uh, starting on bin five, the next one's meats, and we're doing Costco rotisserie chicken. It's probably the cheapest way to get um, pre-cooked chicken. So four chickens gets 10 pounds of chicken uh, for $20. So $2 a pound, or a little better, for chicken, plus you can make some really good chicken broth with it to cook the rice or to cook other things with. Okay, we'll get these in the bins. We've got the rice from the last batch. So the rice cooked in the chicken broth. And you can see that uh, they've sucked down tight against there as the oxygen absorbers have done their magic. So now we'll get the chili in. And in a few days, they'll look kind of like that too. So we'll get these in here and get them on the freeze dryer list so that we know where to find them. And plus, I can make a note that there's still room for another batch in here. So if one of the other uh, later bins, if it won't fit, we have room for one more batch in here. So moving on. Yeehaw! With those in the bin, we're ready to move on to the next batch and the next bin. So the next batch is rotisserie chicken from Costco. We'll start that and that'll go in bin five. There is more room in bin four still. And so we could put other batches or other bags in there. So if subsequent bins get too full, we can slide a few bags into this bin. And since we're labeling them, our, and since we're recording them on the computer system, we know exactly where every bag is. So we can find them, we can sort them out by uh, item, so by what food it is, or by what the bagging date is, so I can find the oldest ones or the newest ones, uh, or by bin number. So we can tell you what's in each bin or what was bagged on a particular month. I don't go by day because that would be more data points that I need. I can narrow it down just to month, but I also have my, my notes 
of every batch so I know what virtually every batch is. So as soon as it's defrosted, we'll go down to the next thing. I really like the, well, who doesn't? I mean, the rotisserie chicken from Costco is the best. In fact, it's probably the only reason I'd even go to Hawaii is because they have, at their Costco, they have um, more ovens than any other Costco. They sell more chickens than any other Costco. I would just like to see that.